So in this video, I'm going to take you on a real estate shoot with me and tell you every single little detail that I do and all the little hacks and tricks about my method so you can apply to your style. And hopefully this video will be helpful for one of those who wants to start but don't have tons of money to drop on the gear. I will tell you from all the equipment, what kind of software I use, and I'm gonna give you a tons of alternatives that are free that you can just implement and start creating the business that you would want in this real estate field because you can do tons of things you can do walk arounds you can do photos you can do i mean lifestyle videos tons of things that you can do with the real estate commercial real estate tons to dip in and create a business okay so buckle up and we're gonna jump into this video with tons of knowledge and i'm pretty sure you will learn something new today Okay guys, so we're pulling up to the address. Communicate with your real estate agent. Make sure he or she awares that you're actually going on the shoot. That's what I like to do. That just puts you on the professional side. When you are working with a real estate agent and your communication is next level, you will be absolutely praised by that real estate agent and any other real estate agents or professional in that fact. Take the time to over communicate. It's only will elevate your game for the future business. Now, so quickly tell you a little bit about what I do and for real estate, I do some real estate just to get this extra income. It's super easy, but my main thing is videography. I do tons of clients, like from surgeries to candidates for politics, commercials, ads, you name it. And I have quite a bit of retainer clients, which is just an amazing, amazing way of making money. With this, I'm gonna teach you everything I know, film myself, and I'm getting paid by a real estate agent to film this property and also i'm making content for you guys and i'm making money off of youtube if you would like to get on the same page what i do and do the same thing for yourself it is not far away you can totally do it and how they how they say it uh, shoot two birds with one stone you can work smarter not harder so when you start out you definitely want to start working harder sometimes for free to just get your feet wet get to know the industry get to know the realtor agents in the area wherever you are and position yourself as a professional as a rising professional in the beginning obviously reach out to all your local area real estate agents open houses come out there go to office depot create a business card your real estate photographer videographer create just simple business cards and just start hanging out tell them that hey I am new to the area, even if you're not still, say I'm new to the area for this real estate business. You for sure will get some jobs and you will 100% will get offers and start working with the real estate agents, uh, commercial properties, whatever. Let's just go ahead and start with taking some of that equipment into the house. And by the way, so you know, I already been to this area and shot all the photos of outside because when the real estate agent gives me the address sale saying like hey oleg this is the address can you tell me how much it's going to cost i'm like yep not a problem let me look it up i go on google find the property look at what that property is maybe there's some zillow information it tells me how many rooms how big is the house then based upon what the square footage and everything or how long it's going to take to shoot and i can tell him hey this is gonna cost like 800 bucks, 1,000 bucks, based upon that size of a property. Now, always, always, always checking out the weather forecast because right now it is rainy, it's nasty. A day ago, it was sunny and it's like the only sunny day for this whole week. And the realtor needed the photos this week. I found a time just to carve out, I know it was busy, but I would show up at this property during sun time, it's beautiful, and the pictures outside has been taken, and I'm jumping in the car and off I go to do all my other stuff. Today, it's gloomy, it's rainy. I will do a tons of photos inside, and it actually is gonna be very, very good. And I'm tell you why it is good to take photos when it's kind of like gloomy outside. Uh, let's just go ahead and start. Okay, and as you can see, this is the reason why I was asking real estate agent for the code so I can then take the key out and get in the house. 
So we'd have to do the little bit of maintenance. So let's go through all the rooms and just to make sure everything is, looks good and in a good place. Because you'd be surprised how many times I would talk to the real estate agents. I would ask them, is the house ready for the shoot? Is everything cleaned up? Everything looks good? They say yes, and I would show up and the house is completely a mess. And I had to like literally clean it up, take it out some stuff, move some stuff around just to make sure that every room looks good. Now, if you want to have this kind of relationship with your real estate agent, you can totally do that. Or you can just simply tell them, put them an ultimatum, just like this house needs to be clean because if I'll show up and it's not clean, it's not ready for a shoot, I either A, will take photos and just deliver you some of the rooms that are ready and some are not, or B, I'm just gonna go back home to my office, but I will charge you for that day that I wasted just by showing up and it's not ready. So, and always, always, if you're in that kind of area and you can just simply ballsy tell them like, hey, you messed up, the house was not ready, I wasted my time, here's the documentation. I took a cell phone video or photos of that time when I arrived, it was not ready, here's the proof. So always, always do that because you never know. There might be a real estate agent that you show up, you did that, tell them like, hey, I show up, the house was not ready, then go back they come in, clean up, and then they blame you that you didn't do your job because the house was clean, just, you know, there's all sorts of people out there. So make sure to document every single thing that you do just to cover your butt. Let's walk around this house, shall we? Right from the start, as you can see, trash. I mean, that's something that I have to like move away. I mean, something over here in the corner, I have to take that out probably in the shot. So that's, uh, not good at all. So I guess this is like a laundry room. Yeah, it's a mess. As you can see, the house is not ready, but again, it's this one is a pretty easy money to me and I definitely have to just do a little bit of work. And one of the examples that I have for you, as you can see, let me actually go to second native ISO, which you probably don't know, but when you have this kind of fantastic camera like Sony FX3 or Sony a7S3, you can jump to 12,800 ISO and it's literally you can see in the dark. This room I'm skipping. So just so you know, because this is not ready for filming at all. This one is good. Okay, this one, definitely skipping. There's no point in shooting this. This is a mess. Okay, so you can now see all those things that I'm telling you. You have to make sure that the facility or real estate property or commercial property is ready. If it's not, there might be problems. At least it's gonna take away some of your time. And again, time is valuable. Time is very expensive, so, and something like this, right? Now, these things I can totally take care of, just move them out, whatever, but the other stuff I'm not touching. So let's prepare. So guys, before we start shooting, I'm gonna go over all the equipment that I have right now. So when I said hit two birds with one stone. What I also want to add to it, if you are in a real estate shoot, let's say you are doing it for free, you're just starting out, you want to build portfolio, make sure to have at least two phones if you're shooting on the phone. If there is a possibility for you to rent or borrow a DSLR camera that looks somewhat presentable, right? Get on the shoot, use your phone, set it on the tripod or prop it with the books or whatnot, but take photos or maybe ask somebody to take photos of you doing the shoot. So it's gonna be a marketing material, kind of like behind the scenes that you then can promote on social medias. Document as much as possible. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm pretty much like double dipping. I'm actually on the job. There's no time sensitivity that I need to do it. So I'm taking it to my advantage to teach you guys how I do things with everything on the real estate shoot. When you are out there, you can always multitask. You can always do so many different things and it will help you in the long run because you will have 
amazing footage, then you can put it on the website if you need a website. You can put it on your Instagram. It will help you market yourself, your business. You will never know, maybe in the future, you will use that footage to show off. Maybe you're gonna just hit amazing job and you become super famous. That would be super awesome for those who are making documentary about you. You never know where your journey is gonna take you, but make sure to document because it will help you in the long run. Now, one thing I want to stress, I use a tripod that is very, very, very cheap. I have, by no means, I have money to buy myself whatever tri tripod I want. This is one of my first ever tripod that I ever bought. First of all, the form factor is very close to what those, you know, Peak Design and all the other really nice carbon fiber tripods are. So with this one, you unfold the legs, every single one of them you can extend to the fullest. But when you are in a real estate shoot, you want to have as much room to create that wide field of view. So you wanna back off as far as possible. So you have this neck that can go down, up, and you also have this piece that you unscrew and it goes even higher. With this long neck and short legs, you can go and put the tripod as close as possible to the wall. And later on, I'm gonna show you the reason why it is important to do so. And if I do extend these legs, it is, and I'm just gonna show it and prove it to you because not a lot of people believe it. I am 6'8", I'm a very tall dude. With this tripod, I literally can put the camera above my head. And if you shooting real estate, it's not as important, but this tripod helped me out in a lot of different cases where I need to set up a camera and there's a bunch of people stood up in front of the camera and they just blocking my view. I extend this tripod way up there and I can film over their heads and I'm not missing a shot. With the other tripods, they're like maybe up to here. So my chest level, you don't wanna put cinema camera, rigged up big bulky camera on this tripod because it might fall. Same time, if you're shooting on a DSLR, on the smaller cameras right now, on the phone, this is the perfect tripod. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 40 bucks or so, but I will get all the links to everything I talk about in the description. It's affiliate links. You're not paying anything extra, but you're helping creators just like myself to get extra cash here and there for affiliate, right? I will make sure that to give you the link as close as possible tripod to this one that extends, just simply because I bought it like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago when I just was starting out. And I don't know if they still have this model, but there's plenty of them. And I actually, I'll show you, I'm shooting right now all this shot on the same, same exact tripod, but just different color. That's how much I love this super cheap and expensive tripod. Out of all those that I tested out, the beginners, and still again, like I'm to this day using it. I do have bigger, heavier tripods. I always, always gravitate to this one just simply because of how versatile this tripod is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take down the shorter legs, leave just the two. If you're on a really small budget, you definitely can use phone. iPhone, Droid, doesn't matter. I will have a completely different video on how to shoot and film everything on the phone with the real estate when you're starting out. But for this sake, let's say you have a DSLR. So when I first started out, I gravitated more to APS-C camera simply because they are more affordable, lens are cheaper, and there is one lens that absolutely blew my mind even to this day because it is 10 to 18 millimeter and it is so wide. You don't wanna go like fish eye wide. So a lot of people say, well, I'm gonna go get a GoPro and go like super wide and no, it's gonna be super weird. It's gonna be super hard to film and, and edit that. You don't want to do less work you are actually gonna be doing in post-production if you are preparing yourself on the shoot and you have a system. With this lens, it works with my older camera, my, one of my first cameras that I ever bought, I still have it, it's gonna be a sentimental value, it's gonna just always be with me because it was my first camera that actually started my career. And I'm glad that I chose Sony when I just first started. Okay, I'm, I'm wearing off to a different direction. Okay, so we have 
a APS-C sensor camera, 10 to 18 millimeter F4. F4 is perfect. Anything that you're gonna be shooting real estate, you don't want the aperture to be wide open, which is like, you know, 2.8, whatnot. You don't want that. You want a lot of things in focus when you are shooting real estate. Only in rare, rare occasions that you would go down and it usually is in video. When you're actually shooting a video, you do not need to be all, you know, F10, F11. You can be wide open because you cannot control as much in video as you do in photos. In photos, you can set up to a longer shutter speed and take everything that you need and make sure that everything is in focus and bright enough. This is one setup that you can do currently and what I'm running, gunning right now with is a A7R5. That's definitely expensive side. It is full frame and I use 16 to 35 F 2.8 G Master lens for my shooting just simply because the quality of that lens is amazing. It's super sharp and is perfect for that kind of real estate photography, videography. SD cards doesn't matter that much. As long as you're not shooting super slow motion, you could go to a very fast SD cards. And I have another video about the SD cards on the video side and what you should pick, what you should choose as far as SD cards. But I'll show you on the screen exactly what SD cards you would want to use that are not gonna be breaking the bank and not gonna slow your camera down because some of those cards are so terrible that it's just bugging down the whole camera and how you record things and the camera starts overheating and that, all that nonsense. With that being said, let's go ahead and put SD cards, you put the camera, battery, put on the lens and we're gonna start shooting. I always put the two caps together from the camera and lens cap, and it comes up with a being cool little container for SD cards if you have some something little, or maybe if you are using these for something to hold and you have camera lens on the camera body. And let's say on the top, the cold shoe little cap, if you don't wanna lose it, toss it in here, close it up, and it's always in this little protective case and you will always find it, it's not gonna be lost. Turn that to 16 millimeter. When I shoot real estate, I always make sure I put on the widest lens and I turn my camera on a bracket exposure. And what it does is your camera takes overexposed shot, a normally exposed shot and underexposed shot. And what I mean by that, when you are filming, you are filming that direction and you have windows with bright sunlight in one side and then you have a dark chimney or dark corner in the other side and you want to make sure that the lights and that the windows and everything is visible and you can actually see what is going what the hell is going on in that dark corner that's where you collectively put those bracket shots together the overexposed that is going to be showing the chimney and all the dark places and then underexposed that will show what's going on outside if there is a good view if there isn't a good view and it's just terrible view or maybe some kind of neighbor over there through the window picking his nose you don't want to show that i usually leave it like overexposed that the windows are all bright out you decide on what to show make sure if it's an ocean view yeah you definitely want to show off that there is a beautiful view out there not always the case with bracket shooting i always set the camera I want to make sure that the camera is leveled and straight on the camera. As you turn it on, you can select and show off this leveler. And everybody's like swear, like, oh, I'm just using this leveler. Not always. If you want to be like sharp, perfect and angle and everything, don't always use the leveler. Use your grid. I always turn on the grid and it shows off every single thing that is in every single line or post or drawers or whatnot. It shows me on the screen if they're leveled or if they're not. Then I adjust everything, make sure everything is good, set on the timer. I usually set up about five seconds. I set on the timer and what I do is I just put it all, all the way to the corner. If you do have flip screen, it's awesome. And I see, okay, that looks great. Then I tap the button, it starts the timer. Then I walk away, usually just walk away somewhere where I'm out of the shot. It takes those three shots. Some cameras actually can combine all these shots together and already give you an 
a perfectly HDR image. Some cameras don't, and some cameras you get those three images and you go to the editing software and you put them all together. At the end of the video, maybe in a different video, I will go over all the editing process on how to do all those things. So stay tuned, subscribe, and all that good stuff. You know what to do. With all those images, I double check, just make sure everything is good. Then do it one more time. I take another picture just to make sure that everything is good. You never know. The worst thing you can possibly do, get it through the shoot, then go home, put it in the software, check it out and it's like blurry or is it something's not right or it's out of focus or not. People do shoot in manual focus. I don't care that much about it because I'm already shooting at the higher f-stop. For my case, everything will be in focus no matter what it is. When you take one or two photos of that angle, go to a different angle of the room take three different angles whatever you feel like is going to be a good composition what your eye looking like and you're like okay that looks great sometimes there are angles and corners of the room that aren't, aren't that great to be honest and you're just like yeah skip it don't don't take it don't worry about it skip it if it's not looking great take only those shots that you think is going to be good take two or three of them just to be on safe side you don't want to sit through and pick all those images go through thousands of shots just to find to be like okay i just did too much of those photos that's just too much work that you have to do in post-production iso i always keep it under 800 i only play with the shutter speed and i always make sure that i'm just a tiny bit overexposed make the place and room brighter if there is a great natural light i take it to my advantage with photos it is fantastic to use just daylight so a few moments ago i told you the reason why i kind of like to shoot when it's like cloudy and gloomy outside and i'm inside it's not as bright outside and it's so much easier to use the daylight and expose not even like turning on some of the lights obviously kitchen yeah i'll turn on the lights some rooms yes i prefer actually no lights being on just simply because the exposure i can control with photos videos on the other hand is a little bit different story for videos i always prefer to shoot on something like fx3 or a7s3 just simply because it has that second native iso if you want to know all about the second native iso of those specific cameras i have another video for that you can check it out with videos i always go with that camera just simply because i jump to the higher iso then i can actually stop down as far as my aperture just to have everything focused i put it on a gimbal and i just do the walk around i have a different video on on the gimbal work of the real estate or commercial real estate you will just learn tons about the video part but we're going to talk about the photography of the real estate properties Here's, I'm going to give you a little trick. Whenever you get the address from the real estate agent, put it into a Google search. Try to find this a lot of times on the realtors.com or Zillow. You will get already that property that has been listed in the past and it was purchased by the buyer who is right now a seller. So when you are shooting this location, you come out here and you're like, dang, I kind of like clueless on what kind of angles to shoot, what is gonna look good, what's not. Keep in mind, all those listings that you're probably going to be shoot on this you know, house, that has already been done. So when you go to Zillow, you can check through all those photos of the same property and see what the other photographers or whoever they hired that time uh, did for that particular listing. And if you need some ideas, that's the best way to actually get those uh, inspirations. Don't obviously rip off that photo to, to exactly the same way, but you can simply look at the previous work of the same property and say like, all right, I can actually add something to that, a little my own twist to it, or maybe rearrange the furniture if there's any furniture. But you can definitely get inspirations and that's kind of like a little hack or trick as you may call it that will help you especially when you just get started.
And additionally to that, when you look through all those photos and you do that homework, you look all through the photos of Zillow or Realtor.com, when you arrive at the location, you can go through and check out what that location used to look like and what these current homeowners they're trying to sell this property did additionally to this house. Maybe they added a nice countertop or they, maybe they added some sort of cool chimney or fireplace and they did some renovation that adds value to it. That might be your time to shine and show off that you do your research and when your realtor gets the final product, all those photos that you've done, and you create the accent on those add-ons that buyers actually made to the house, the real estate agent will absolutely know that you know what you're doing, that you did your homework, and they will love you for that. And he will be hiring or she will be hiring you more and more often. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, if you, your nose itches, that means if you're either going to be drunk or you're going to be mad. One of the two. Okay, I hope I'm going to be just uh, drunk from celebrating of, I don't know, 100,000 subscribers. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and comment. Seriously, if you do have questions about any of this, please don't hesitate to ask. I will do my best to answer all the questions and uh, maybe you have something awesome to add and somebody else will benefit from it. One thing to make sure when you are filming a photo or even a video, turn off those fans. You don't want those fans to be working. So if you need to turn on the light and the fans automatically turns on, just yank one of these cords over here just to turn off the fan so it will not work when you are taking a photo because it's gonna be looking terrible. And all these things, like little things like this, just take those things down. Let less work you need to do when you are editing. And find these little, little weird things that are all over the place. Put them temporarily in the drawers clean out the area, prepare it for the actual photo. Later on, you will thank yourself for doing that and just taking all the details into consideration. Here's another cool hack I want to share with you because if you have a fireplace, for example, you can totally utilize one of these little lights. First of all, they're magnetic. You can set it so that little light creates that special effect of like fireplace or you just simply turn it on Go to your settings, go to your Kelvins, and change that to warm color. You can put it inside of the chimney, and when you close it down, it looks super cool. You're taking a photo, and let me actually show it to you just. So it's gonna look really, really cool, really neat. Obviously, you can dim it down if you need to. So this is just fireplace, but you can always utilize that if there's a lamp, and some real estate agents give you property, there's lamps, but they don't have light bulbs in them. This light is super tiny, super portable, and you want to create that little ambient. Yeah, there's a little hack. So for all of you guys, links to that light and all the other equipment that I'm talking to you about in this video is gonna be in the description below. You can check them out. Let's move on to the next one. When you are switching lenses or you're putting on the lens, if you have DSLR or mirrorless camera, please double check if your sensor has any dust particles on it because a lot of times we are shooting these environments that are super dusty and you will get some kind of dust particle as you put it on the lens then when you're taking the photos on the lcd screen you cannot see if you have that dust particles if you just have a simple like rocket blower or in my case what i have here this fancy nightcore bb2 and i have a video about it turn on to optical mode turn on Clean it off upside down just to make sure everything falls down and then put on your camera. After you clean off and dust off all the things, look at the sensor, make sure that there's nothing there. Perfect, slap on the lens and off you go without having those pesky dots on the sensor. It's just, that's the worst thing possibly can see when you're actually uploading the photos and you're like, okay, I'm about to edit and you see these like nasty dots. When you click the lock, 
and you move this little knob, it turns on, it has like a little light. So you can see sometimes when you glance at it, what's, what dust particles that you need to take care of. And there's times that the actual outside of lens and cover, it has this nasty dust particles that you cannot even blow away with that uh, rocket blower or BB2. So you just simply turn on then the fan, turn on the light, little brush, and that takes care of it and you're good to go. Here's something that you probably never heard before that this FX30, Sony FX30 Cinema Line, I guess, I guess you can call it Cinema Line, this camera is probably one of the perfect cameras for the real estate photo shoot with combination of 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Optical steady shot inside a lens. You can slap the lens on this body turn off active stabilization if you really need to be super super non-shaky footage yes makes sense but if it's on the tripod take it off you don't need it and it creates much bigger view and just to show you all you have to do is just have this camera this lens and i think you're good to go for a very very budget professional camera it's not bad at all. And I want to show it to you and prove it to you how much wider this lens versus the full frame 16 to 35, which is super overkill, probably like 6,000 or something dollars for that setup. And this one, I think if I'm not mistaken, maybe just a little bit under $2,000. That's really, really good deal for this one. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to show you some of the samples of this camera with this lens combination compared to the other ones. Okay, so what I will do is I set up 10 millimeter on this Sony FX30. Now with this shot, I will take sure, may, I'll make sure that the tripod stays on the same spot. Then I'll switch onto the different camera and take the same shot. But the composition is gonna be, I don't know if you can see it probably, but the composition will be right where the end of this wall and I'm gonna try to make sure that this doorway is in the shot here. And I'll do the same thing and you will see how wide this camera does on the other one. So I turn on my grid, I put 56 Kelvin. F-stop I set it for, let's do nine, just to make sure everything is in focus. Uh, ISO 800. I'm gonna just go ahead and do the shutter speed one over eighth. It looks really, really good. So now I'm gonna take this one off the tripod. I will not move anything. Take off this tripod and then put on this camera. And keep in mind, I will lower it down just a little bit. I know there's a battery grip over here. So just to make sure that it's same, turn it to 16, the camera on. I did not move anything, but I will try to, to make sure the composition is the same. So you can see that edge over there. It's obviously much narrower. So this is much bigger. Again, granted, obviously this camera has much, much more megapixels than this one, but when you deliver into a real estate agent, they don't need the billboard size, huge, super high quality. They need to make sure that it's on the website. Majority of those folks that are watching Zillow on the website of realtor.com, they see in all these posts and all these photos on their phones. They're not watching it on TV, rarely, maybe on a computer or a, lap, or a laptop or iPad, maybe. I'm telling you right now, you will be delivered and I'll show you in the next video how exactly you want to export and actually mass edit your photos super fast without wasting a lot of time. So let's take a photo of this one right here. And I have a timer here because that's what I use this one over here for. Yeah, the image looks great, but that one is so much wider and so much better, I feel like. Okay, so let's just start shooting then. I turn all these legs to as minimum width possible. Use the secondary neck to lift this up. 
This allows me to put as close as possible to the wall. When I set up my composition, I then tap the self timer, walk away because it's like five seconds, takes three exposure shots, combines them. Then I just always review the footage. It looks fantastic. And there you go. And you do it one more time. And after second time, I'm just moving on to the next one. With this kitchen, I definitely am gonna be turning all the lights so it's gonna look so good and so beautiful. Clean up just a tiny bit over here because there's just a mess. Yep, and that's, that's one of those things you just have to uh, clean up whatever you can clean up because uh, photo's gonna be trash. I know the buyers should do that themselves, but uh, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to make it look good. And also one more thing, whenever you are filming something at this house, right now where I'm filming, it is winter time. So it is cold. The moment I showed up here, it was really cold, really freezing. So you gotta be comfortable when you are shooting. Don't be ashamed to just go ahead and turn up the heat. And a lot of times, especially when there's like light coming through, you definitely want to make sure to just wipe some of those surfaces just so it look pretty good. Some spots you can fix by just erase or clone stamp in the software, which I will show you. I have one room that has this nasty spot. They said they, they will fix it. Can you please take it out because it's gonna be fixed? I'm like, yeah, sure, not a problem. If there is a issue with the house or there's a hole in the wall that the seller will never gonna fix or not planning on fixing, you don't wanna cover it up because then somebody who's buying the house, they look at the picture and it looks all perfect no hole in the wall because you took it out in the Photoshop and then all of a sudden they're buying the house and there's a whole is whole mess. So just make sure if they're trying to fix it, take it on the post. If they're not, make it realistic. Whatever you're showing, show it the way it is. Transparency guys, transparency. So one shot is gonna be really good. And what I do is I'm gonna unplug this cord because it looks like a sore thumb over here and I'll just I'll hide it so it's not sticking out too much. Let's take a photo of this beautiful living room. Another thing that you definitely want to invest later on when you're actually filming stuff, during these times when the sun hits, the wooden floors, you have reflections. So you want to put polarizer filter. It takes away any kind of glare in that particular room. Here I kind of messed up. I needed to have that polarizer filter and shoot it when it was like gloomy. Now sun came out, it's gonna be quite a bit of contrast, but that's why we are shooting three different exposures. And then I'll show you how we fix all this stuff and make it all even and look good. Take a photo, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna take this side. This looks great over here and raised just a little bit. You definitely want to make sure when you're filming something, the height as well has to be a particular. A lot of photographers, they're teaching you how to do all this stuff. They're like, well, chest height. My chest height is probably the same height as normal human being. So I'm, I'm six, eight. When you're looking at the room, you always look at that perspective of being somewhere in the middle. If there is something in the way or countertop just go just a little bit higher, as long as this creates a good, good view. So it's not just countertop or, or this couch is blocking the rest of the view. And you're not too high, all you're shooting is a ceiling. So you want to find that perfect medium, take a shot, review it. If you want to just to test out the waters, go a little bit higher. But you can always reference to Zillow photos that were done previously, what it looks like. So let's take another shot. I don't know why, but I absolutely love how this camera shutter sounds. Actually here, I, I want you to hear it out. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> A little ASMR. So now time for the kitchen. Kitchen and master bedroom, absolutely the head of this whole photography gig. You have to make sure the kitchen looks good. You cannot imagine how many times like somebody's looking, they just jump in, especially ladies. You know who you are. 
jumping straight to what a kitchen looks like, what it has to offer. Make sure that looks amazing. Turn on the lights, turn off the lights, take a couple of more shots, different varieties, because that one you cannot overlook. If you're in this kind of like tight spaces, cubbies, pantries, you need to highlight them, do it vertically. Worst comes to worst, that real estate agent will not use that photo if they don't like it, but I always do. And also another thing, if you're shooting that direction and here it's kind of darker in here this area but over there is super bright all the way in that living room you can totally open up some of these doors just to make more light while you're taking a photo so everything is exposed properly if you don't have let's say flash or anything like that another tip that i suggest you have this so you have this door stopper it's small but keep it with you at all times and here's the reason why a lot of times when you're shooting especially like something where the door is not staying put when you're trying to like open it all the way there's tons of times where you try and like squeezing in the shot vertically into the restroom this for example door and i want to open it let's say if i want to create that brightness i open all the way up and let's say i'm filming from this corner go to my camera to film this thing it doesn't stay it just starts automatically close that's why you get this door stopper pop it in and you're done and then you take the shot whatever take it away put it in the pocket it's small enough that's another awesome tip when you are filming something like a restroom clean off all the soaps all the branded nonsense that is on the counters because it's gonna look ugly just make sure that if you see a restroom if there's like some nasty bright towel or dirty towel or whatever take it off take it off take it away clean it out even toilet paper make sure that even the toilet paper if it's like half ripped rip it all away toss it in if the toilet paper is not even full it's just like a little piece dangling around or just like just small roll just take it off just those little things will make a big difference at the end result. Majority of these rooms that have this ambient light, you definitely want to change your Kelvins. You don't want to change the Kelvins at the post-production when you edit the photos, even though you can do when you're shooting raw, but if you're shooting JPEG and you want a quick turnaround or your computer does not handle really well raw files, definitely go with JPEGs, but with JPEGs, you have to make sure that looks good. It's not too yellow or too cold. With this, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my white balance and change it to a little bit more cooler tone because this light is super yellowish. Make sure shower curtain is one to one side where it shows the shower head and all that stuff so people can see what that looks like. There are times where you are shooting, let's say staircase, and you need to show off a nice staircase, you definitely would be shooting up or down, and then your old lines are all messed up, but still try to find some sort of symmetry or some sort of way of composing the proper way. And uh, just so you'd be pleased to the eye. And here's another cool way, if you do have some kind of islands or you have windows or kind of like bar areas, you can totally shoot through. So create those interesting angles that not a lot of people have seen before. The worst comes to worst, the real estate agents say like, eh, not using it, that's it. But more creative shots you add on to your portfolio and other realtors like, oh my gosh, who did that? I love that kind of style. And then you can get hired pretty easy. Maybe then your realtor will think other realtors trying to steal my photographer. I probably should pay him more. Remember how the sun was out and everything? Now, when this golden hour, this is the best time to film, to photograph. The sun is almost down. The light is super soft. There is light. Then to expose for the outside is amazing to show off there. There's a playground. It is absolutely one of my best and favorite time to film is the golden hour. With this, I'm gonna wrap it up. If it was a good video for you, please don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. If you want to check out all those tools and all the equipment that I use and mention in this video, links is gonna be in the description below, the affiliate links, 
You're not paying any extra, but you're helping me out as a creator to make more videos in the future of this channel. Thank you so much again for watching. I will see you in the editing side. I'm gonna link the video of the detailed editing of this property. If you have questions, ask them away in the comments below, suggestions, maybe some new ideas, please share with the community. I would love to read them and answer some of them. Otherwise, like it or hate it, subscribe it or not, but always remember to stay awesome and I will see you in the next video, guys. See ya.